we have Susan Aki as our special guest today, and she is a designer. She is cross-stitch designer, quilt designer, and she has her very first book with, with It's So Emma called Summer Memories. Welcome to the show, Susan. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited and nervous. I feel like I'm on the Today Show for quilters. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> So we're just going to talk about all kinds of stuff today, guys. We're going to talk about the book. We're going to talk a lot about fabric and thread and washing quilts and just things that I don't ever cover. So I want, as we kind of go, I want you guys to just throw your questions in and um, we're just going to go as long as I guess my headphones run out. Um, so, <laughs> but we're just going to talk a lot about uh, fabric. So I thought we should start, Susan, with like, you have a very unique style of fabric choices. Talk a little bit about when you go buy fabric, who, whose fabric do you buy and what colors? Because that's like the most Im Im interesting thing to me. Okay. Well, first of all, I've, I've done every genre of fabric. I loved reproductions. I did a whole room of reproductions, painted the, the room like that, um, that mustard. Uh -huh. It was, it was crazy. And I went through that. Then I went lighter okay. and the, the, I, I even had a, um, a bubblegum pink room at one time. <laughs> that was a little, a little much. It kind of gave you a Pepto-Bismol feel after uh -huh. a while. It was too much. And I just, my colors have a tendency because orange is my favorite color. I like the lighter shades of that. Mm -hmm. So I just have a tendency to go to the softer versions of the rainbow, basically. And I, I don't like to sew in rainbow colors, but I like the colors of the rainbow in the, when you water them down. Mm -hmm. So when I shop for fabrics, the first thing I shop for are backgrounds. I never have enough backgrounds. I love any kind of little teeny tiny print, putsy print, white, cream. It doesn't matter because I'm going to mix them all up anyway. I just want to have just the fabric to say something so it's just not all white. Mm -hmm. I always shop for, I always shop for like little tiny prints, you know, like a tone on tone kind of a print mm -hmm. that says something, doesn't say something that I know are going to be my blenders. Mm -hmm. Then I'll shop for something that like it could be say a coral let's see what kind of flower I can find on the coral. Then I'll play with that. that. So it just rolls from there. But I love to go in a quilt shop and see what bundles they put together. Do you have a favorite pre-cut when, you when you're buying or do you buy yardage off the bolt? Um, well, I st always start with either a charm pack or a layer cake. Okay. And the reason is, is you can take it apart. I'm the one of the ones and people gasp when they hear it. I take apart all my pre-cuts. I, I unroll them, I unwrap them, I and lay them all out. People don't like that. The towers of fabrics, yes, I take those apart. I don't care. I mean, I just got to see what's in them, you know? So I know that's how I order my yardage or that's how I go hunt down yardage at the quilt store. Okay. But if you take a, a charm pack or a layer cake, it gives you pretty much what the fabric looks like. Mm -hmm. And I can tell instantly what I want extra of in my stash because mm -hmm. I'm pretty much by half yards. So but I know if I'm going to be, if I want to do something and I know that there's one print in there that would look gorgeous as a border, then I'm definitely going to order more of that. Stripes and ginghams, always I order more of that or buy more of that. Only because I like bias on those. Okay. So. And how much, yeah, like, how much fabric do you think you have? Like, how many yards do you think you have? Oh, my gosh. Okay. That was an off the wall. Um, not as much as a quilt shop. <laughs> but close. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you know, I did work at a quilt store. Okay. So the goal was, is to go home without a bag, you know? So, cause every day you go in and stuff will come in, you go, Oh, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. And you know, it's hard to narrow down what you really mm -hmm. love when fabric's constantly coming in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it took me so long to refine how I like, what mm -hmm. I like to stitch and what I like to, you know, sew with for color. But and a lot of my fabric's pretty old. I mean, you could look through probably some of those quilts even in that book. Go, wow, that's an old one. Yeah, because it's yeah, because you don't use a whole lot. And I buy half yard cuts. So, and you, if you're only using a two inch strip, that's going to go a long way. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the summer memories uh, quilt that we're going to do as the quilts along, and let's talk. So she was kind of talking about her backgrounds here, and you can see that they have just like this has a little circle little red X. So you talked about the backgrounds. Talk about how you picked your blues and pinks and reds. 
Well, you know, so many designers match each other enough in color right now that you can blend everything. Nothing is going to be, unless, you know, obviously, unless the blocks are side by side. Those can come from all different places as long as they're in the same range. Like with the pinks, I don't own tons and tons of that color of pink, but I pulled everything I owned out in pinks and laid it out. And then you have to look at like the scale of those. Those those half square triangles aren't very big, uh -huh. so I can't use a print that you're, you know, that you're going to lose everything in. So that's I narrowed those down that way. So mine's a matter of I pull it all out and refine it from there. And like these so are I may wovens pull right here. These are woven. Yep. Yep. And you know what? I actually had layer cakes of wovens because I didn't buy yardage of wovens. So I had the layer cakes of wovens. I thought, well, hey, these work. Mm -hmm. And do you have like, do you buy Minnick and Simpson blues or any designer yes, blues? Yes, always. They're medium blues. I, I absolutely adore. And she, she blends and matches with so many others mm -hmm. that I can work with a lot of other blues with hers. But she's a great starting point. Mm -hmm. I actually even pulled some that has some Minnick and Simpson. I don't know. Can we see these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I hold them up like this? Yeah, let's go okay, back so to I the pulled... bigger screen and then they can see them better. Okay. There you go. So I pulled, there's a Minnick and Simpson right here. Okay. But then here's Thimble Blossoms right here on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then here is Brenda Riddle. And I forgot who this is. And here's Fig Tree. Mm hmm and that top one and is I guess this Camille. Is, right. So they all blend enough. So mm -hmm. if you're doing quilts with the blues, they would all blend enough. Like I probably actually would take the gingham out of this if I if I wanted it to read more mm -hmm. solid -y kind mm -hmm. of blues. But they all, because they're not going to be side by side, they would all work. Mm -hmm because you'd get your different tones. That's how like, when you look at an antique quilt and it it could be like all the same background, uh -huh. but it's been folded like for a hundred years, all different ways. Uh -huh. And it looks like different shades of white. Uh -huh. That's the kind of look I like to achieve uh -huh. when I'm doing, working with whites and backgrounds and stuff like that. So show me your reds and pinks. I didn't pull the reds Oh, and you pinks. didn't, okay. No, I just pulled the blues for right now. Okay. I, I actually don't have a ton of pink pinks I have because they leaned more towards the corals mm -hmm. and the reds oh I've got every range of reds but in that quilt right there mm -hmm. there's a lot of ranges in there because there's a there's a lot of fig tree but mm -hmm. a lot of Camille matches in there mm -hmm. I know in my personal home that Minnick and Simpson reds are a little deep for me but her all of her other ranges of colors mm -hmm. match my shades of reds mm -hmm. So it all works. So you have to crack the bundle. Mm -hmm. You have to open it up. You have yeah. to take the tie off. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I've found is like you got to have to lay it out and then step away like eight feet or something and look. And you can tell right away, kind of like with that gingham you had, you can tell right away what doesn't fit. I still, for this so along, I'm still missing a couple of pinks. Um, but I just figure I'll just start and find something. Like I'll just pick as I go. Um, cause I don't but have once as much you of a see it, But once you see it away, mm -hmm. you're going to see that more pinks will match it because they're really not touching each other. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the overall, I mean, unless you have one, you know, a hot pink, mm -hmm. obviously is not going to go with that pretty mm -hmm. pink, but they're all going to blend together and it's going to look like the look you want. Mm -hmm. And all the books and stuff, all the quilts and summer memories are kind of that red, white, and blue. Do you want to talk about when you approached us at It's So Emma, like what was your inspiration for the book? Um, how did you come up with your idea for this particular book? I really, really, really wanted to do a book that had two of my favorite loves, cross stitch and quilting. Okay. And I adore Americana. I did my, I converted my whole little um, dining room into a library and it's all Americana. You know, it's that, you know, 4th of July. Mm -hmm. I, I just like that feel, mm -hmm. but I always use a softer range. And the main reason I use a softer range is because I don't have a lot of navy blue. Mm -hmm. I would have to literally go shop for navy mm -hmm. blue because none of my navies play well with each other. Mm -hmm. So for me to make an entire quilt with all different fabrics, I would have to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's why I lean towards the medium blues. Plus we get so much light in our house. It just, it fits. Mm -hmm. So I knew I wanted, I started playing on the computer on this, the cross stitch program and doing flags. And originally all those little cross stitches 
are actually in one big sampler on my computer that I still yet to fill in all the other. I okay. mean, it's huge. It's humongous. I think by the time I finish stitching it on a 36 count, it'll probably be 12 by 18. It's huge. Okay. And I just broke them all down mm -hmm. because I love the look of the little pin keeps and the little bowl because mm -hmm. everybody loves a little bowl. And I thought, oh, that's cute. A little Americana going on. Mm -hmm. And it just gives that summer feel to it. Then I started realizing that's the whole feel of the book was all about my summers mm -hmm. as a kid and all about my summers with my kids and how we approached it and what we did. So every one of those quilts just reflected something growing up for me or something mm -hmm. we did with my kids. And it just, it just evolved naturally, which is really, I think that's what I'm most excited about. And then when Sarah did the photography, she nailed every mm -hmm. feeling that I had about that book. I mean, she nailed it all, mm -hmm. especially all the quilts hanging off the porch mm -hmm. with that blue mm -hmm. ceiling on the porch. She had no earthly idea. That is my favorite thing in the whole wide world is that hate blue on a ceiling. She never knew that. And she nailed it. It was gorgeous. Oh, awesome. And so talk to us. A lot of people might not know about um, how you have done some free patterns with Arafil, how you started that, um, and when you started when doing I, those. When it came along with Arafil, I knew when they asked if I'd like to do a color box, I said, I'd love to, but we need to give people something, you know? I mean, I feel like they're going to get a color box, so big whoop, you know? Now they have to go find something to do. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, so I went ahead and I designed a little, it, the first box was a Christmas box, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, I love Quaker samplers, mm -hmm. samplers, so... I went ahead and designed a little sampler that went with the first box. So it, then it just continued on because I felt like if people had something to instantly mm -hmm. stitch with, listen, if I could put the linen and the needle in the box too, I'd shove that in there too. Because it's like you instantly want, mm -hmm. you know, it's like coming home with new clothes. You want to put them on. Mm -hmm. So you want to start something when you get it. Mm -hmm. So that's why the RFL boxes always have a freebie with it. And then I, during the year, I try to make something totally different using the same colors uh -huh. for those box and just give it to Aura Phil as here's an extra for you, you know, uh -huh. let's play the game. So if people want to keep... follow you on Instagram, uh, tell them and your blog, tell them how to find that. Oh, I don't have a blog. You don't have a blog. Okay. No. Oh Lord. No, I'd never keep up with a blog. And so I can barely do Instagram anymore because I can't do the reels. Oh. I feel like I'm directing my own show. <laughs> Who's got time for that? I mean, I'm not a director. It's like I flub it up every time. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can find a lot of those things like throughout the year on her Instagram. And we show them. Yeah. Like, you've let us borrow them for our cross stitch channel, which is really awesome. So we've got to see them like live and in person, which is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, some of them I still have here, not even framed. I think they're just hanging up, mm -hmm. you know, just just because I love to sit and cross stitch. Mm -hmm. And I know the excitement when you buy something, you want to do something when you get it. Mm -hmm. That was the whole reason that you get something with your box with RFL. Mm -hmm. And then we did with RFL, we did that um, collecting colors. Mm -hmm. I decided this is my light bulb moment. Wait now, if they're getting a box, they need something. If you want to start collecting something, you got to have a starting ground. Mm -hmm. And I started did a cross stitch and it was you know i, I forgot how many weeks it was but uh -huh, I um, remember. yeah 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 and and so it told you what colors to use uh -huh. y'all even packaged up the colors just so you could start your own collection of aurafil because i absolutely love aurafil uh -huh. i love it i love the way it stitches but most of all oh my gosh that little spool game changer it's cute Game changer. So when you're quilting, what color RFL do you use and what weight do you use? I use the orange spool. What is that weight? 50. This is how technical I am. Okay. Okay. 50 weight. <laughs> and I, I only use the, the, I think it's 2021 okay. or that 24, maybe 25. 2021, 2024. Yeah. It depends on actually when I go to the quilt shop, I'll say, don't let me walk out of here. I need thread. And I pick okay. up like three at a time. It'll be like, oh, wait, what color do I, I sew with? <laughs> It'll be one of those. Okay. I just grab the color I think I sew with. So do you use but the I don't sew with spools or cones? The spools. The spools. Okay. Oh, and you buy like yeah. three? I buy like three at a time. Oh my gosh. But I buy pre-wound bobbins for my machine. So I don't have to buy, you know, I don't have to wind bobbins. So what brand do you use? 
for that. A pre-wound uh -huh. bobbins. It's, I think it's NEC. It comes in a box. It's a huge box. The box oh. lasts like over a year. Oh. Some machines don't take it. Mine, okay. My Viking takes it and my brother takes it. Okay. Some machines, like the Bernina um, doesn't take it because they come, they're little plastic, plastic. spools. Bernina only takes the um, cardboard top of bottle because you can take the tops off. Mm -hmm. But you get so much in them. Yeah, I haven't tried a pre-wound bobbins, but like I'm really curious to like try it. I just haven't tried it yet. Oh, listen, your work's done for you. Yeah, I mean, you throw I, it out. yeah, I do have a kid that will wind bobbins though. When he wants like something, like he wants you know those coins for the games on his yeah. iPhone or whatever. I'm like, oh sure, you gotta wind like twenty bobbins. <laughs> and it takes him like an hour, and he's like, an hour for two dollars and ninety nine cents, and I'm like, yes. That's actually pretty smart. Yeah. <laughs> but my R fill goes much further. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. So we talked about, like, um, your your backgrounds, your blues, reds, pinks. Talk about how you pick sashings, cornerstones, and um, your borders. You know, this is one of the first quilt books that I've ever done that I've actually done, like, fabric for borders. Usually I have piece borders because... I, I don't buy enough fabric to make, you know, because I like my, to cut my um, borders on length. Me too. So, yeah. So unless I have enough, or if I can find enough, mm -hmm. then it's going to be a pieced border of some sort because I don't have enough mm -hmm. to, you know, I, I don't want it pieced. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> with this, because I knew the direction it was going, it was really pretty much, let's t try to not to repeat a lot of the borders. Mm -hmm. Let's try not to repeat a lot of the sashing. And I knew the look, I mean, obviously is gonna be repeated. You have gotta get as scrappy as you can on the inside mm -hmm. so it doesn't look like one big repeat on the outside. But this book was so much fun because it did allow me to use all of the meat, because I, I don't love huge prints, I love medium mm -hmm. prints. And I love medium prints on a border because, and I like lots of color because I don't want it, like if, um, like that quilt right there in front of you, mm -hmm. if I would have used a blue background, the whole quilt would have turned blue. Mm -hmm. But if I would, since I was able to use cream, it doesn't read mm -hmm. just as a blue quilt. Mm -hmm. It reads as a red, white, and blue and pink mm -hmm. quilt. So borders mean a lot to me if I can find the right print. Otherwise you're going to be a peace border. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then you wash, oh, talk about your backings and your bindings. Okay, my my binding, I never, ever, ever cut until it comes back from the quilter because I could change my mind and I've already wasted that whole thing. Because okay. to me, it looks totally different once it's quilted. Sometimes it requires something totally different. Like that beautiful floral print, uh -huh. it didn't need anything else. It right. did, did not need one other thing on there. So I thought, okay, well, we'll just use that my other bindings per se no i wait my backings my long arm quilter pieces them for me or i order the big backings if i know i want to be able to flip the quilt mm -hmm. i all, always order the big backings if if it's like a lap quilt or something i just let her go to town and i'll say here i have extra fabric of this this and this and she'll piece anything she loves piecing backings. so how do you pick the color for your backings Sometimes it depends on, I have the, I have bins over at her house of quilts and backings. Okay. And I'll say, don't I still have that over there? Or let's try this. And she'll say, yeah, this one works. This one, you know, so it'll be like that. Is there enough of that for it to be a whole backing? Do we have to piece it? And okay. you know, that's how the decision is made on that. But I'm constantly looking to see who has really cool big back. A lot of my quilts have the same big backing because I happen to love the print, mm -hmm. you know, and when you flip them, they're gorgeous. So, but no, it's just a hit or a miss on that. Some are purposely done. Some are just because that's what I have. What you have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I give her extra blocks and say, you can either have the blocks or use the blocks. It doesn't matter. Do you, um, do you want to talk about who your quilter is? Yes. It's Sue Rogers and she's fabulous. Okay. She's adorable. She's so sweet. And she's in Florida? Uh-huh. Okay. She actually lives probably 20 minutes from me. Oh, Okay. And um, one thing, do you starch your fabrics before you no. start? And then, no. so that's totally different than what I do, which is great. And then- And you don't wash either. I don't wash my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. I mean, 
my house is, everybody's like, you must be dirty. I'm like, no, my house is spick and span. Like, it's, you walk in my house, it's clean all the time. But I don't like my stuff. I don't. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the reason I started washing. There was a girl that came into the quilt shop. I didn't know her. I could never had seen her before. Uh -huh. She came with the most gorgeous quilt. And I said, oh, my gosh, where did you get that antique? She goes, antique? I just made it. And I said, why does it look like, like that? that? She goes, because I wash it. Uh-huh. And I went, that's all it took? So I, I truly, I, I don't wash them, wash them. I stick them in the, the rinse cycle okay. of the machine that takes like, I think it's like 17 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I put them, pop them in the dryer. Okay. Just to get that stay out of the fabric and the, it softens up the, the batting. And what batting do you use? She uses all kinds. The, okay. She uses the bamboo. She uses wool. She uses whatever. It depends on how much quilting she thinks she's going to do on. Okay. So, like, depending on what she's going to do with the design picks, she right. picks. And you don't care what kind? She knows. I love a floppy quilt. I love it to flop. I want it to. Okay. If I have the flu, I want to be able to roll up it. Right. You know what okay. I'm saying here? Yeah. Yeah. So, I just want it floppy, soft, and I don't, I don't want anything stiff. I don't want it. I don't do a lot of wall. I don't have walls to hang quilts. Okay. Except for in my little library. And that's even done super floppy. Mm -hmm. But, no, I, I just want them. I wouldn't be able to roll in them. Mm -hmm. And do you pre-wash your fabrics before you use them? No. 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 How did you find your long arm quilter? She used to work at the shop. Oh, okay. And when the shop went out of business, she bought the long arm from the shop. Oh, okay. And then yeah. she did she take it home or? Yes. It's it's in her house. Okay. Jacksonville may be big, but Jacksonville's like living in an itty bitty little town. <laughs> yeah, we have someone who's asking like what shops you'd like to go to in Florida and what kind of, and do you teach retreats? No. No. I'm not a teacher. You know why? I'd much rather just come to your house and let's just do it. You know, let's just crank this thing out. <laughs> I will say you have like a ton of ideas. Uh, you kind of remind me of me like a little bit because sometimes if I start having an idea, it just doesn't stop. And sometimes I'll have to warn my employees, okay, today's one of those days. I'm about to just like vomit 50 things. We might end up doing four of them. But there's just days where like your, your mind just can't stop. Yeah, well, you know what? Kind of like this is what happened with that book. It was kind of like narrowing down the mm -hmm. ideas. But sometimes it'll be, I'll sit there and I'll think, and all it takes is for you to sit at the machine one day. Mm -hmm. You make one little thing. Oh, light bulb, bingo, right. got it. Let's move, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. Did, um, so I think this is a funny question we got before someone said, if you could make any of the quilts from the Summer Memories book, which one would you make? And that's so funny because- I read that. You made all of them. <laughs> no, okay, so I read that. Okay, first of all, I, I don't I don't think I've ever repeated making a quilt, ever. I mean, I've made it once and that's the end of it. Right. I am going to do this, this because I'm going to do it in a different colors. But um, of all the quilts, they all have a specific look to them, mm -hmm. so you can't really change them. Of any of the quilts, I think two of them, the veranda quilt, mm -hmm. which is the blue and blue white, and, white. and what, did, what is the, um, that one? Oh. That could be done and look holiday-ish. That could be done. I want that in every single color and just stack them all up till it looks mm -hmm. like coverlets, mm -hmm. you know? They'd be so cute on the end of a bed, on a trunk, which mm -hmm. I don't have, but I mean, I could have. Yeah. Just stacked <laughs> up store. in all colors. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could and do a the... along with that, like, um, in 2020, what year are we in? 2024? Somebody on Instagram has already made it, and she absolutely loved the instructions. The instructions are spot on, too. Oh. I mean, they're amazing. That quilt, to me, has, it is, it could be a gift. It could be for you. It mm -hmm. could be in any color. It could be a holiday. Mm -hmm. It could just match your house. That, to me, is the most versatile in there. Besides the other one, um, the stars, mm -hmm. what is that? I forgot the name of that one. Um, I'm supposed to remember the names. The aren't Lazy I? Afternoon? Yes, Lazy Afternoon. That one also, to get back to her question, that one also is one that you could remake over and over to suit 
the occasion to mm -hmm. suit your life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm, that could be done so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And this one I think is really uh, different than the others in the book because talk about how you picked your piece, your big pieces, because they really are It's so busy. funny. I look at that, I look at that one hung up and there's two pieces in there. I think I liked that to begin with. <laughs> Um, I needed something that wasn't white and I have a lot of, you know, those are medium prints uh -huh. pretty much. And I tried to just stick with, it had to be a floral and it had to look sweet. Uh -huh. that, was, that was my only prerequisite. Uh -huh. And then there's two in there that I look at now and think, whoa, maybe shouldn't have picked those. But from a distance, that's me. Uh -huh. I don't know if anybody else said, I've never pointed it out. So I'm, I should hang it up and see if anybody says, whoa, what did you pick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like pin the tail on a donkey. Tell me which one. Yeah. How do you keep track of all the ideas you have? Because uh, you do have a lot of ideas. Post-it notes. Okay. And these little grid. Uh-huh. Um, Papers index cards. Have you ever played with these? Oh, I didn't know. They're that. gridded. Uh-uh, I haven't. Oh my gosh. So like, I don't doodle and I'm not a doodler, okay. but I can follow lines, uh -huh. you know? So I can do like a half square triangle, uh -huh. a little line. So I'll uh -huh. draw off a little block and then I'll write a little note to myself. It'll be like um, blue, white, purple. Okay. And I'll remember that. That's how I remember it. But I don't scrapbook. I collect like I'm a pro scrapbooker but I don't, I don't scrapbook. I've got a lot of supplies and I look like I'm really efficient, but I'm not. I buy the cute little people that do these on Etsy's, uh -huh. the little junk journals oh, that all, yes. always have little pockets and you can tape them yeah, in there with that, that. So people with, can see. With that, with yeah. that tape, that, what is that tape called? That cute tape? Washi wasabi? Tape. Washi, washi tape. Washi tape. Yeah, <laughs> wasabi. You can. <laughs> that would be really hot tape. <laughs> But it's got the little pockets. I always look for books with little pockets. Oh. And then I use that little tape because the tape doesn't ruin the paper so I can pull it out. Uh huh. But then I can store it in a cute little book on the shelf. Oh, those are cute. Who do you buy those from on Etsy? Well, you know, Silver and Sparkles, she's on Instagram too. She does such cute work. Okay. I've bought a lot of little books from her. I do love her. She does, I just love these junk journals. I mean, one day with all of my supplies, I made. I may become a junk journal maker. Oh, <laughs> I've never even, I've never even seen one in person. I mean, I've heard oh, you about them. Yeah, I've heard about them, but I, I'm oh my gosh, to buy one. look at this. She puts all the cute pages in here. There's a lot of blank pages. Wait, hold on. Look at this. Yeah. She puts pockets. She's got a lot of pocket pages. I buy all different kinds from different kinds of people, Uh huh. but she's, there's ones with pockets. There's some without, you just, and it's a way for me to store this kind of stuff. And then I'll go back because I pretty much remember what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of like go back and say, what was, what was the colors I was going to use? Or sometimes I'll even tape a little piece of the fabric to it. How do you like, how do you, how many quilts do you think you make a year? You know, I used to make quilts just for fun, fun. And now it's more like it's, it goes for a project or a book or a publication or something mm -hmm. like that. So I don't know, I, you know, cause I sew very fast. It, mm -hmm. it sounds like I'm make like, I probably make more than I'm going to ever say I make, uh -huh. but I don't know. We're not going to even guess. Yeah. And no, I don't know how many quilts are in this house. <laughs> yeah. I don't either. Like I probably have made a thousand. Like I have no idea. Like I lose them all the time. There's one that I made recently and they need to take a photo of it. And I was like, I don't know where it is. And I was like looking around my house. I've looked like five times. I can't find that quilt. It's who knows where it is. It could be here, it could be at my house. Who knows? One day I'll find it. One day I had a, I had a, a quilt. It was Lori Holt's quilt and I lost it. I found it like two <gasps> years later. I knew it was in my house somewhere. It was like shoved in the back of a, thing and I called her and I was like I found your quilt she's like can you please mail it I'm like yes I found it but I knew like one day I would find it but I just sometimes I just think I have so many quilts that it's just like whatever like you know like I know but it's the, the point of the matter you want to make it because it's fun you want to try right. the block then you want to try the, the rest uh -huh. of, like I love making quilt blocks I'm not going to even count how many random quilt blocks I uh -huh. have and how many bins of quilt blocks just because quilt blocks are fun uh -huh. And then to put them in a quilt, oh, come on. Yeah. It was, it was made to happen. 
Yeah, and okay, so talk about the two green quilts that are behind you, and because um, we have some people asking about both of those. Okay, the top green one is um, my very first apple green purchase of an antique quilt. I have an antique quilt rule, never veer from it, and people are going to kind of screech when they hear it. It's a $50 quilt rule. If I see an old quilt, okay. I don't ever pay more than $50 for an old quilt. Okay. And I always make sure it's in perfect condition, too. I mean, I check it. <laughs> I don't think that would work I don't buy, Austin. I don't buy cutter quilts for $50. I buy full on beautifully done quilts because there's so many quilts out there and it really is the market you're shopping in uh -huh. you know i mean it depends on where you're going to find them right but that was my i wouldn't walk out of the store without that i actually i bought it up in new york and i went back the next day um to pick it up thinking, please be here please be here that started that was apple green then the two under it their step stooled uh -huh. under the ladder those came out of um, countdown to christmas book those okay. are both in Countdown to Christmas. Mm -hmm. The middle one is Irma, 450. There's 450 snowballs. I made them all during that Hurricane Irma. And then we lost electricity on my last snowball. Oh, <laughs> no. So, and yeah, keep going. The quilt over here, mm -hmm. the orange one is um, from Sampler Spree. And y'all had that book on PDF. Y'all probably still have the book book, too, because the book is not that old. Mm -hmm. I did a quilt along with Moda on that one. Mm -hmm. And hold on, I'll move so you can see. <gasps> oh, I the love that one. right there is out of mine and Lisa's book. Mm -hmm. It takes two. Mm -hmm. Do you put labels on the back of your quilts? Nope. You don't? <laughs> I used to. No, I used to. Okay. When I gave him his gifts, and then it got to be, oh, God, I hate binding, and now i got to put a label on. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. But I heard somebody puts their label on before it even goes to the quilter. Yeah, that's what I do. They sew the label onto their backing. That's what I do. And so it gets quilted right over. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, I got the idea from Jaybird Quilts like 10, 15 years ago. I, I used to see her do it, and I thought, that's a lot of work. Like, I know. she must have a lot of time on her hands. And now I'm do doing Do you label it. all your quilts? Huh? Do you label all your yep. quilts? It, well, if do they're you? like, oh, yeah. If there's like, um, if it's something just for work that like might just never go to my house, I'm not gonna put a label on it. But if it's for my kids, yeah, I might have their name. I go all out. And then, then it's good oh. because I forget, I have a lot of kids, so I forget who I made what for. Cause you know, if you make it when they're like two, you make it specifically <laughs> for the personality. I can't remember what they liked when they were two. I can't even, I'm just going to get through today people like I cannot <laughs> remember stuff so it's good because then I'll remember and then they can't they try to say oh that's mine or that's mine so then it makes my, my daughter doesn't really care about quilts at all but my boys do so if I label them they can't fight over them because their name is on it yeah well maybe I'll start labeling because I have a feeling everything's going to get kicked to the curb in my house so <laughs> <laughs> So if somebody is trying to like add to their stash of fabric and they're going to a quilt store or shopping online at Fat Quarter Shop, what would you, what would be your number one tip? Backgrounds, backgrounds, backgrounds. Okay. Always buy backgrounds. You can never have enough backgrounds. You know, I buy that, um, um, it's the Bella. So I have a couple okay. of Bella solids that I buy bolts of just because I know I'm going to, it's the white. It's the, I think it's, is it two, two, 200, 100, two, 200. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I buy that by the bolt okay. and always have that. Okay. But I won't ever, um, I would much rather have a little print. And if I see like on Instagram, mm -hmm. the little shops that have these bundles of white, right. buy them. Well, Fig Tree I always has buy them. backgrounds. Yeah, Fig Tree always has those too, and then yeah. they sell oh. out in like ten minutes. I know, and and it's it's kind of like, oh, I I got up and went to the bathroom. I got up and went got the door, and they're gone. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But no, I always, always, always backgrounds. And then it's a matter of picking your favorite colors. Mm -hmm. Just you know, if if there's something you like, grab it. You're gonna find something to match it later on. Mm -hmm. I've got fabric in there. I'm still waiting to match with something later on. Mm -hmm. But I loved it when I bought it, so I'm keeping it. Mm -hmm. And I'll reevaluate because I reevaluate my fabric like once a year. I go and I pull everything off the shelves, everything, color by color. Okay. And I start making stacks of what's not working for me, what I haven't touched. Okay. And if it's big amount of yardage, I'll 
whack a half a yard off and then get rid of the big piece, you know? Uh-huh. And if I haven't touched it in that next year, boom, we'll do the whole thing over again. So do you, um, how do you like store your fabric? Is it in buckets? Is it by color? Like how do you store it physically? It's, and then how do you store Everything it? is by color. Okay. Everything is by color. I take apart the bundles that I get. Okay. They're folded. Everything is folded the exact same way. They're folded and put into color. That way I can see okay. what I have. So like if you had a um, bundle of fig tree, you would divide it by color and you wouldn't keep the bundle together? Yep. Nope. Oh my gosh. I would cry. See, that's what people guess. Oh, about. <laughs> crazy. I mean, I don't do it like right away. I mean, I truly am not a barbarian. I'm not gonna, you know, I, I do enjoy the bundle looking at it, but no, enough already. We're not gonna play with it if it's all together. Yeah, that's true. You gotta open it up. And when you buy your backgrounds, like do you buy them in half yards or do you buy bigger? Half yards. Half yards, everything half yards. Ha- everything half yards. Okay. I love half yards. Half yards can get me so much, you know? And still have leftovers. Are there certain designers that when they come out with something, you always buy a certain pre-cut or you always have to have every one of their collections? Um, I'm now to the point I can pick and choose more what I really love or what I'm thinking of future projects for. Like, um, okay, so the fig tree fruit cocktail came out. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. This is this is the second layer cake I have because the first one I, I literally destroyed, took apart and everything. And I've ordered, you know, like all the different pieces uh-huh. that I love down right. there. But and like all of that, when I finish with like say the layer cake or the charm pack, okay. they all go into my scraps by color. Okay. So it's not like anything's going unused, you know, and I just th- throw it to the side. No, everything like a, a layer cake to me is a scrap at this point because it can't fold pretty to match all the rest of the folds in my okay. fabric. So it's a scrap and I don't, my scraps, no, they're not ironed. They're not pressed. They're not pretty. They're in bins and they're clear bins. So I can see exactly what I have and I can pull out my reds right now, dump it all on the floor and go like a mad woman. And those are also by color. All by color on my Instagram. You'll see, um, cause I have a lot of pictures of my scraps mm-hmm. and you'll see how I, I store my, um, mm-hmm. all my scraps. I actually have pictures in my closet too. I have a secondary closet that houses like my kits uh-huh. that I've put to the side or uh-huh. that I've made that I want to do. And they're in those, um, what do you call it? The scrapbookers, you know, the 12 by 12 the boxes, bins, the clear box. I think art yeah, bins. Yeah, tw- they're about this yeah, thin. Yeah, they're thick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 12, they're 12 by 12. They, Cause they hold those scrapbook sheets. That's what I put my projects in. Oh, okay. They're for, I didn't know those were for scrapbook sheets. Yeah. Um, someone asked, and this is a great question, and I feel like I've answered it for myself a million times, but Christine asked, um, I wonder if having a quilt business has ruined your love and enjoyment for quilting. That happened to me with photography. Once I began doing it for other people, I stopped taking pictures. Oh, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, it makes you want to play more. I yeah. love doing it. Yeah, I, I just like, love making a quilt block. Yeah, I feel like the key to it is doing what you love. And I get so many people on, on the live streams. Well, you only show so-and-so's fabric. You only show this. I show what I love. For me, if you just do what you love, you're making a life for yourself. Like, you you create your own way. But, like, if you're just doing something to do it, that's totally different than doing, like, what you're passionate about. So I think you have to keep it, like... Well, I, I, it goes back to the fabric. I don't think I could go into my fabric right now. And there's not one piece that I can say, ooh, I don't really, I don't even like this. I love all my fabric. Uh-huh. It's a matter of, am I going to use it? Uh-huh. No, I only play with what I love. And I only, that's why I like to play, do just make quilt blocks. I like to play with templates and I like to see what the template does. And I like to see what else it can do. That's uh-huh. where it's, the fun is. And do you start with the quilt or do you start with like the fabric, like the pattern or the fabric first? Um, I feel like I start with the fabric and then I have to find something I, to fit it. But some people are just opposite. Um, I could go both ways. It depends on, see, a lot of times when I used to make practice blocks, I only made them in reds and whites so I could have red and white sampler okay. quilts. 
And I got too many of those. So then I started thinking, okay, what color of quilt do I want to work with? Let me make a practice block with that. So mine, I guess, I'm going to say mine does start with the block first. Okay. Not necessarily a pattern. It could be a template. You know, I spend a lot of January. This is kind of like the way I do New Year's resolutions. I don't make New Year's resolutions in that I'm going to do this, this, and this. I spend a lot of January playing with the templates that I haven't played with all year. Okay. Or I haven't tried enough. You know, like, of course, I get the Sew Sampler box. And when I do it, I have I have three separate baskets for what comes in that, for the stuff that goes in my drawer, the stuff that I'm going to put to the side, the templates that I haven't tried yet. So I spend, like, January playing with templates that I've probably never even tried before just to see what they do. Right. I always and then tell see, people, try you know, it. See, you might love it, you might hate it. You don't know until you try it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, playing with, to see and what, to, to cut up a piece of fabric and to come up with something is like, to me, more fun than making the entire quilt. Mm -hmm. Just to see what happens when you cut the fabric mm -hmm. up. What's your favorite quilt you've ever made? My favorite quilt, oh, wow. Wow. I don't think, I, I think my quilts are, while I'm working on them, they're my favorite. That's kind of how I feel too. Until you get to the very end, you know, when you have like three rows left to sew and you go, oh, oh yeah, that's the worst. It's like, <laughs> and then the binding, <laughs> I, I count the seams. So when I get to the end, like in your piecing, I'm like, okay, I have 10 seams left. Okay. I have oh, I eight, do that. eight I do that. seams left, four seams. And it's like, okay, I got to take a break. Okay. What am I, you know, it's just like at the end, I think the end is the worst. I just like making the blocks and cutting the fabric. The rest, I don't, I know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't make as many quilts, but I want to see if my math worked out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and what magazines do you work with? Um, you know, I haven't done, I have had things in American Patchwork and quilting, but I haven't had anything in there for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think the last thing we did was when they came to the house. And that was right after COVID. Mm -hmm. But I haven't had any quilts in there. So do you know who I've been working with? Yeah. Do you, um, do you use quilting software ever or do you just scratch no. it out? You just sketch I, it yeah. out. Yeah. So. And I don't actually like scratch it, scratch it out. I take pictures along the way and print out pictures and staple them. Oh, okay. So that you kind of know what you're, yeah. I, you know, the funny thing is, is I probably would enjoy working with a program like that. Cause I love working mm -hmm. with the cross stitch program, but the reality is I'd probably spend more time playing mm -hmm. on the program than I would be sewing. So I might as well go in there and just, just start sewing. Yeah. I found that like, I have to like color it, print it, and then close the program because if not, then, and just make myself cut it. Cause if I don't, then I'll just be like cutting, going back to the program. Like it's just like my mind won't stop. And so I did find that I had to close my program, print my block so that it kind of limits me from like having ADD in my quilt room. Like, oh, let me starch this. Let me change the color. Let me, you know, sometimes yeah. like I get unfocused. Yeah. I, well, mine is, it wouldn't be as matter of unfocused as, is I would be trying to best myself, mm -hmm. you know, let's get this one better before we start wasting fabric. Well, you know, when it really comes down to it in my lifetime, I'm not going to cut all that fabric up. Oh, no. So let's find the least of what I love in there and let's mm -hmm. play with it. And we'll just, we'll wing it. I'm okay with winging it. Um, have you ever been surprised in the process of making a block? Like, uh, you know, just something that just totally shocked you? No, you know what? Secondary patterns to me mm -hmm. are the most amazing things when they happen by accident. Mm -hmm. When, you know, when I put something up on the design wall, I put it up there, a block, and then I'll say, okay, what can I, there's too much white space. I need to make something in a sashing or whatever mm -hmm. I'm going to do. And I'll, oh, look what it did. That is so cool. And it happened totally by accident. That's mm -hmm. my favorite part of making quilt blocks. How big is your design wall? It can hold. I, okay. So when, a lot of times I have to turn the photographs like on Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever, or when I'm even submitting to publications because I work long wise. It's longer than it, it's okay. longer than it is wide. Okay. Right. So I can work long rows and long rows are less rows to have to piece, okay. you know, when you do the yeah. whole quilt. <laughs> yeah. So it can fit 
I can put a queen if I have hangovers, you know, uh-huh. and then the queen goes all the way to the ceiling, all the way to the floor. Uh-huh. But if it's a twin, really pretty good. Did you make it? Or did so you that's buy about it? how big it is. My dad made it for me. Made and it. it's actually moved three different times. It's come off the wall. It's framed. It's got a frame around it because I knew I wanted it cute too. And it's come off the wall and been moved. Uh-huh. Um, for So speaking of like beginners, talk a little bit about the tools that you use every time you make a quilt. Or like I, what are the we, things, because we I do find that I just use the same things over and over and over. So like if you ran away from home, what would you put in your backpack? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I only use this 60 degree. Mm-hmm. Um, thing. Do you use this size or the smaller? I use the small, but I only use the ergonomic. I still can't figure out how to use those. I don't know what it is, but like... I can't use that ergonomic. I know, it's so weird. I'm not kidding. And Kevin gets frustrated with me. He's like, why don't you change? I'm like, if it's not fixed, if it's not broke, we're not fixing it. Well, you know, I used to keep painter's tape around here, wrapped around the handle, uh-huh. so that if I went anywhere, I knew it was mine. Oh, yeah, that's I, good I mean, it's a plain little rotary right. cutter. I mean, it's the same rotary cutter. Yeah. I just tape it all up. It's mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's the first piece. Okay. okay, so when I first started quilting, I went to Joanne Fabrics, and of course, you have to get a cart. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm a quilter now, so I went to the quilt department and to, the, to all the tools. I picked up this tool, not even knowing what it did, how and mm-hmm. but it looked like real mm-hmm. quilters would have this. Mm-hmm. This is the original one when I first started quilting. You can barely see the numbers. Right. You can barely see them. Right. This is like priceless to have because it does. It's got the, the flat corner. Mm-hmm. You can cut strips. Okay, so that that's always on the table. This Omni Grid. What is this? Six by twelve. Okay. Always on the table. This. The big one, creative grids. What is this one? Eight by 24. Eight by 24. Mm -hmm. Because I use that all the time. That's how I can tell. Yeah, yeah, that. Okay, so if I run away from home, definitely taking those and my seam rippers. Okay, so tell me your story about seam rippers. You have a great story about (laughs) seam rippers. When's the last time you changed your seam ripper? I didn't know that you were supposed to until uh, Denise told me you said that, but I've never, I don't change them unless they break. Unless, really? I've okay. never changed it. You them. realize the sharp point is going to always stay sharp. You realize your little cutting thing is right down in that little scoop thing by that little red ball. So that gets real dull. I, I change know that. seam rippers all the time. Oh, yeah. I buy them like three and four and five at a time. I had no idea. And I change them out often. Change your seam ripper and you're going to go, oh, it's going to be life altering. Oh. I'm telling you, you're gonna you're gonna thank me. You're gonna say, I can't believe I didn't do this before. I have no I idea. I all, and it, it's not like I make a zillion mistakes. But you know, we yeah. we seam rip. I mean, it's obvious we all seam rip. But it's this little that little Thing. scoop in there is what's actually doing the cutting. When that gets dull, and when you have to go, when you have to keep yes. doing the same motion, it needs changing because it should go zoop. So okay, so the problem I have with seam rippers is I stitch with like the tiniest. Stitch. I just, it's so hard to un, un- seam rip. Um, what stitch Then change your seam ripper. Um, oh, yeah. That's what it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that two something to like, see my. Okay. Okay. I have like a fancy schmancy, I do everything machine, mm-hmm. but that's in the closet because I have the best machine ever that does nothing but the most gorgeous straight stitch ever. It's the brother. 2000 something 1500 i don't know what it is but it only does one stitch and it does it beautifully Mm -hmm. so and it's a dial there's no computer to it so you know you flip the light flips on you're you're ready to go Mm -hmm. i mean if i could have bought it a quiet industrial machine i would have everybody talked me out of it i mean i would i would love have loved to have been like like a a assembly line sewer Mm -hmm. yeah they said that that machine is so loud, though, I couldn't take it in my house. That's why I have the brother, and it does one job and one job good. So it's a dial, mm-hmm. so it's like in between the 2 and the 2.5. Okay. Yeah, see. And then when I use the triangle paper, I crank it down. Uh-huh. Do you press open, or do you press to one side? I try to press to one side, and it depends on, like, if when I make a practice block, that'll tell me if I need to, where I need to press open. Mm-hmm. Because... If you press to one side, I mean, you can, you know, mm-hmm. I love it when little seams nest together. Mm-hmm. 
you don't have to try as hard. I mean, because I literally, I had the worst posture for sewing. Instead of, you know, I don't know about you, but you're supposed to sit yeah, up and, and sew like, like this. this. No, my yeah. whole face yeah. is down there. Yeah. I mean, I'm sewing my tongue in. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean it's, it's a pretty, and so my neck and my yeah. arms, it's like, I walk away yeah. from the machine like this. Like some days I'll sew 12 hours straight and that like, I don't, like if I take a lunch break, that means the food was delivered or my kids made it or whatever and I eat for like five minutes. I mean, your body just hurts, like. It does, but what's your posture like? Oh, horrible. Yeah, when you sew, yeah. yeah. I've like, seen people that, no, I'll, I'll that do they this sit and up. I'll be looking at the TV. Oh no, I can't do the TV too. I, I, mine's perfectly quiet in my house. I watched, I used to have the TV in the room and I would watch Law and Order because I'd seen every one of mm -hmm. them. I would stop sewing just to rewatch a show that I've seen probably 14 times like it was brand spanking new. So forget <laughs> it now. And th then I tried listening to music. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I was like, oh, I love this song. And I'd have to stop and I'd have to sing or dance to it. No, <laughs> perfectly quiet. <laughs> um, for when you rip out your stitches, do you cut the thread between the fabrics or just pick out each stitch individually? Okay. When you have a new seam ripper, okay, you zip it along and you literally pull the entire thread out. I mean, it oh, just Oh yeah. Comes you just right like out. zip, zip, zip and then pull. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Bernadette says she still has the same sewing machine from high school and she's 69. Oh, Seam <gasps> Ripper. Oh, no. She says she has the same Seam Ripper. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you got to change that. Okay. So these little Seam Ripper, you, well, actually, this one's a great one, too. This one's super sharp. I don't know. Who is this by? Well, that one's discontinued. Seam Fix? But there's some that, there, I think that one's discontinued, but there's new ones that, like, are similar. Oh, well, well, I, I don't know unless I've, I've worked with it because Clover does make the best they one. Do. Okay. This should go in a sew sampler box or you should have some sort of massive special on this. <laughs> Everybody should be changing their seam ripper today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll probably be sold out by the time you're done. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't know you were supposed sure they to pull you one. I'll probably buy like four today or I'll have to wait until we get a new stock in and buy. I've never changed it. I mean, I've broken like two or three, but I've never, I mean, probably years, 10 years, five years. I don't know. Never changed. Never even I, thought of it. How often do you change a needle on your sewing machine? All the time. But I didn't know. Okay. I didn't well, know. see, I don't change a needle on my sewing machine until I can hear it go chunk, chunk, oh, no. chunk. And it's like. <laughs> well, I feel no. like I've been using triangle paper more and more. And like now that we have foundation paper, I'm using it all the time. So now I'm a lot more cognizant of changing it because. You can just tell with the paper when it kind of goes you can. dull. Um, okay, same with your seam ripper. You need to get a new seam ripper. <laughs> I probably have four unopened packets in there right now. That's crazy. And I label on, like when I take this out of the package, I label when I bought it. So I leave the empty package in there so I know how old it is before I throw it away. Because I probably every three or four months. Oh, wow. Maybe, it depends on how many quilts I'm doing. Yeah. And it actually depends on how many seams I'm taking out. Yeah. Whether you take out a few or not, you need a good seam ripper. That's a good tip for a newbie. What other tips would you have for people who are like really new to sewing? Ah, uh, just read the instructions. Mm -hmm. You know, there's really not that many quilt blocks mm -hmm. you can't make. I mean, there are people that love, like, I don't love hand applique, but I'll sit, if I have to, I'll machine applique. Mm -hmm. I just like making, I like piece blocks. Mm -hmm. But read your instructions because as you get better and better mm -hmm. at quilting, you can find shortcuts for yourself. Mm -hmm. There's still are the directions, but shortcuts for yourself for making that. Mm -hmm. I think that's really super important. Yeah, do you, I do feel like it's also important, like when you buy patterns, like some patterns are written better than others. Um, and I feel like it's so much easier when you get a pattern that's easy to read because it's less frustrating. I remember, well, you know, I'm it, not going to say who, but I remember when I first started, there was this pattern and it's still popular to this day. And it was so popular back then. I looked at the pattern. I couldn't understand it. I was like, there's no diagram. I'm new. I never made the quilt because I couldn't figure it out because I was too new. I needed more direction. Right. Well, you know, like, I don't like, here's, this is hard for me. I don't like when a pattern um, tells you, because I like to stack and cut. After I've made, I will say this, I think everybody should make a practice block. It's a block yes. you've never made before. Yep. Make a practice block. Yep. That'll tell you, number one, if you even like making the block. Yeah. 
Some blocks you're just not going to want to remake. Yeah. Some blocks you're not going to want to make 25 of for a quilt. Yeah. Make a practice block. But in that same process, you'll find maybe a shortcut for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so when a pattern breaks down, you cut five reds this way, four reds this way, three reds this way. That's very hard for me because, you know, it tells you how many reds. I kind of, that's what you need to read it to Get it. make it sense for yourself. Because everybody processes differently. Mm -hmm. And so you use that big rotary cutter. How many fabrics do you cut at one time? Depends on how new the blade is. Okay. I change my blade often too. Do they make endurance um, blades at that size? I don't even know. No. 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 Oh. But my blades last that last pretty long, and unless you know I've accidentally run over something on my mm -hmm. cutting board or something like that, um, I I actually only for accuracy. I usually don't try to cut more than three fabrics at a time. Okay. So basically, that's a layer of six. Mm -hmm. Any any more than that, even if you're cutting straight. Mm -hmm the edges are not as crisp and i like a crisp edge when i'm sewing mm -hmm. because then i've, I've realized oh wait because see I, that's why i don't love doing with um jelly rolls i like cutting my own jelly rolls yep. i that little yes the edge yeah oh yeah where do i sew that's my least favorite <laughs> uh that's my least favorite pre-cut of any pre-cut and it's probably like our best seller and uh kevin's always like why don't you ever buy jelly rolls because i don't ever have them in my sewing room i'm like i don't like them I'd rather cut a yeah. layer cake and cut it down. I like to cut, though. Yeah, I do, too. I do, too. And I always, when I cut, like, whatever, however many fabrics I have for one, because I start with a clear deck. I mean, everything is clear in my sewing room. When I start a quilt, my whole sewing room is clean. Yes. So when I start the quilt, after I've done all my cutting, I put those fabrics to the side. I don't put them away. I put them to the side mm -hmm. in case I've made a boo-boo or I want more of that or, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. And I don't empty my trash can either until I've finished mm -hmm. that project. Mm -hmm. Because you might need a little scrap from the trash. <laughs> yeah. My, exactly. One of my sons is like, you could make a lot of money with your trash, Mom. You throw away a lot of things. And I'm like, just... Your job is to put the trash outside. Your tra your job is not to give me commentary on what's in my trash can. Do what I said and hush. Sometimes, because they give <laughs> me right. lectures, like you're wasting stuff. And I'm like, maybe I am, but just, you know. It's, it's my way. Yeah. I'm the adult here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell us your story about like how you started quilting. I know you cross-stitched first. I did. Um, my mother-in-law was supposed to teach me how to, well, she wasn't my mother. Was she my mother-in-law at the time? I don't remember at the time. She was going to teach me how to cross stitch. Well, his brother had somebody in his life and she taught her how to cross stitch and told me to leave the room. She goes, I've got to concentrate on one person at a time. So I said, fine, I'll teach myself. <laughs> it was, it was really good. We laughed about it. years later. She goes, I didn't realize I did that. She goes, but it was the way it was, you know, she was teaching her how to cross stitch and it was easy for me to pick up. But I mean, I, I stitched on eight o'clock and I stitched, you know, DMC and, you know, the leisure arts books. Right. And after a period of time, I just put that to the side. Well, you know, working at the quilt shop, um, we started carrying the linen and blackbird designs. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, this is dreamy. Well, I had always hooped when I stitched and somebody at the shop, um, she said, Carol Witcher, she says, you know, you don't, um, she, she didn't hoop and she's always had stitched on linen and over dyed floss and all of that. And she goes, let me show you how to do it. It was like relearning. It had been so long. It mm -hmm. was like relearning how to do all over mm -hmm. again. So I use a, a little petite needle instead of the long needle now that, let me see. Do you use the John James uh, Petite? Yes. Yeah. John James Petite. Mm -hmm. Or Jenna Kimball Petite has one too. Okay. That uh, beneath the moonlit sky let me see yeah i don't think we have those the there's all golden but beneath the moonlit uh -huh. sky was the very first one i did back on linen with over dyed floss that was the very first one and then i did the the what got my love for quakers is right behind me uh -huh. that mary wiggum uh -huh. my pointing at the big one uh -huh. the square one um i did that all with dmc on linen and I picked, changed all the colors. And that's when I realized you can change colors in this and it's because it's mine. Uh -huh. I can do anything I uh -huh. want. And that's what started it all really uh -huh. for all the linens and changing the colors to fit my house, uh -huh. you know, because I have a certain aesthetic in this house. I wanted things to match. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the quilting, the quilting was a little different. The quilting was I made 
an embroidered quilt from my mother. And I never, I didn't even know what a fat quarter was. My husband, we had actually, it was, the quilt show was in town the weekend that I needed. I had done all, and I knew I wanted to make a quilt. I had no pattern, had no idea how to sew a, a quilt, didn't know anything. And I said, well, I'm going to this quilt store. And I said, I'm going to need some money. And he said, well, how, like, how much do you, you need? And I said, 20 bucks. I mean, I didn't even know what a fat quarter was. And I think fat quarters at the time were like a dollar fifty, you know, maybe $2. Yeah. And I went in and there's fabric and quilts and it was crazy. And I picked out every single red and red and white piece of fabric I could find with my $20, met him at the front. I said, oh, I need more money. And I went back in there for more hours. It was like crazy. I didn't even know if that much fabric existed outside of Joanne's. Right. Okay. That's the only place I'd ever been in my life. So did you start quilting after you started working at the quilt store or before? Before. Before. Okay. Okay. Before. I, and I hadn't made that many before I started working at the quilt store. Okay. I remember when I started working at the quilt store, I did, um, I sewed a uh, sample for the quilt store. She said, if I want, ask if I wanted to sew a sample and it was a Sandy Klopp, the ABC, yes. you know, that big one yeah. that has all the applique. Uh -huh. I did that in a week. I thought she wanted it that fast, you know, uh -huh. so I did it that fast and I took it in. She goes, do you want to start working here? I said, sure. I didn't have the faintest idea. I mean, everybody had picked out my fabric for me before. Right. I mean, I, it was a learning process as I started. Right. The bug got me. Yeah. Once you get it, it's yeah. Yeah. I mean, it hits, it hits hard. Okay. So now I'm going to start asking the questions that are coming in. So if you guys have a question, put it in. Cindy oh, asks, or Cicely asks, who in your family quilted? My aunt has a theory that those that pick it up quickly had ancestors that did. No. No one. No. Apparently, I have a great aunt that did, and I've seen one of her crazy quilts, but that's the extent of it now. Okay. My mother sewed clothes. Okay. No. And that's not the same thing at, at all. Mm -mm. It's funny because, you know, some of Emma's, or, you know, some of my daughter's friends will be like, oh, can you hem my husband's pants? I'm like, no. Oh, can no. you do this for a hat? No. Can you do, like, no. the drill team wanted me to, like, sign up to do costumes. And Emma was like, my mom can do it. I'm like, Emma, keep your mouth shut. I'm not doing costumes. I'm not working with vinyl. I'm not doing, I mean, the, I'm like, no, don't sign me up for that. And then they have, like, um, beading or whatever, rhinestoning. I'm like, don't sign me up for any of that. I don't want anything to do with any of that. That's not what I do. Because once you become that person, everybody wants something. You know, and I'm like, no. But it's funny. But then when you say you quilt, yeah. everybody talks about how many relatives they have. Oh, my grandmother quilted. Yeah. My auntie was a quilter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or what is a quilt? Or, you know, what do you do for a living? Are the workmen that come in your house say, oh, you have a lot of blankets in here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And that's like insulting. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't correct them because I want them in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, got a lot of blankets. Let's move on. Fix her fridge. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Anita says she needs to upgrade her cutting mat. What what cutting mat uh, size and what's what brand? Big, what's that big green one? Ulfa. Mine's 20, 24 by, by 36. 36. Yeah. Yeah, because it fits my table. I think that one's great because you can get a full yard, and when you're measuring your borders, you just need to do it like twice or something. I actually wish it was like 38 because, you know, when you have 36 inches mm -hmm. or you need 36 and a half inches, yes, that little tiny inch. lip. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to like po poke your finger there, pull it down. Yeah. yeah, I wish it had an extra inch on there. Yeah. What cross stitch program do you use? Stitch Fiddle. Oh, I've never even it's, heard of um, it. You never have? Uh -uh. Okay. Um, okay, let's, let's don't break the internet. I don't know how many people are watching right now, but please don't everybody go on to see about Stitch Fiddle because I don't want it to like shut down because there's too many people joining. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's, it's a, I think they're based out of the UK, but it's a free program okay. and you pay yearly or like once every three years to get extra features on it, but it's a magnificent program. Okay. I play with it and learn more every time I play with it. It's a simple program to play with because I start, I start all designs from scratch, you know, so I don't import or anything like that. I start everything from scratch, but I think there's ways you can import on that because I looked into purchasing a cross stitch program and I really want to ask cross stitch designers what they use because I'm, I don't know how, how do they get it? You know, I keep my fingers crossed every time I quilt or cross stitch, please tell me they can trans transfer my thoughts into a book or a publication or whatever, because I don't do all fancy stuff. Yeah. I don't either. Yeah. So 
Kathy says she loves cross stitch and she wants to quilt. Where does she start? Placemats, table runners, quilts. Uh, what pattern of yours would you recommend that she start with? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's such a personal choice question. Do you want to make a placemat? Make a placemat. You know, right. I mean, yeah. that's so personal about what you want to make. Right. I knew my very first quilt, I wanted to make my mother a tablecloth. And I knew I, what I, I wanted embroidery on it. I knew what I wanted it to look like. What, what do you want to make? Do you want to make a table runner? Do you want to make a quilt mm -hmm. for your, for, to cuddle with on, while you're watching TV? I mean, I wouldn't start with a king size quilt mm -hmm. obviously i always say like but i make think what you'll use what what fits your life like yeah does it fit does it fit in your house does it fit your timetable like make it fit what your schedule is and what you no well, forget the timetable thing i mean I, no <laughs> we, we don't have timetables this is quilting this is life <laughs> what are your top three templates my top three templates you know i do I do a lot out of that um, triangle and a square. I love that. There's so many things you can do with that. A triangle and a square. Uh, you know, I don't know what that is. Yeah, you know, like the, where it, it, the triangle's here and the extra two pieces are on the outside. It looks like a longer flying geese kind of thing. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is, but. Okay. Um, you know, like um, Dear Jane quilt. There okay. was a, there's a, okay. It's that Dear Jane template actually that got me started and mine's cracked and I have to like work around the crack and make sure I don't like run the rotary cutter. Oh, yeah, right. I should just buy a new one, but that was like one of the first things I bought. Okay. Um, templates, templates, templates. I use a lot of block lock because I mean, there is an absolute, mm -hmm. I love, um, are we, should, are we just talking templates? Cause I love triangle paper and I didn't think I ever would mm -hmm. love triangle paper and like the paper on a roll. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Is that, Triangles on is a that roll. considered what she was asking? Yeah. I think she's talking about yeah. templates, but you can just, yeah, whatever. Yeah, love that. I mean, when you're making like more than four, whew, yeah, they're so accurate. Yeah, love them. Yeah. What do you think about the idea of using your newest fabrics first because your older fabrics in your stash may not appeal to you anymore? No, we mix them all up. Mix that's why I. That's why I sort by color. Okay. And then, uh, does the block each have block? measurements okay so in the book are individual block instructions listed let's see no well, i but think you they're can done in, in groups yeah they're done in groups but you can back into it really easily and yeah you can back into it um yeah if you okay so on your pre-wound bobbins do you use the same yes. color it's obviously a different brand yes yes Yes, and, and I think it's an off-white, I mean, because my white, and it wouldn't matter if it was pure white or white or, you know, mm -hmm. because you're not, you're not going to see it. I mean, if I was, if I'm sewing something that I, you know, of course I know how to wind a bobbin and I'll use color if I have to. I mean, if I have to go to that extreme, mm -hmm. um, I'll wind a bobbin, mm -hmm. but no, you're not going to see it. So mine is like either um, white or off-white. Mm -hmm. Do you cut your fabric with rulers or do you use AccuQuilt? Rulers. That's what, I love yeah. cutting. Um, I adore cutting. What's your favorite quilt in the book? Oh, didn't we just talk about this? I, know. I love every quilt for a different for reason. reason. Yeah. yeah, and I think every quilt speaks to part of the reason that I love it. Mm -hmm. But I do love the veranda and the stars for the versatility of other seasons. Mm -hmm. Shelly says, she, <laughs> says she's afraid to send her quilt to a long arm quilter. She doesn't want to be criticized for her mistakes. They don't do that. I don't think ever. They do that either. No, I mean that that wouldn't even be considered a friend in my book. Yeah. Um, no, be proud of your work. And you know what? If you have spent the time making it as best as you can make it, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't even care what other people think. But mm -hmm. if you're just slapping it together and saying, eh, long arm it out no that's not going to ever work mm -mm. no you you do the best to your ability and mm -hmm. it'll all work if you could only use one designer's fabric whose would it be not fair not fair not fair question okay you're not going to answer okay that. so <laughs> do i have to answer that what is this um oh, i didn't okay, ask okay. it's it's on the screen i know i know i know okay <laughs> 
I love the fig tree range of colors. Mm -hmm. And I always have since her very first line. And I was working at the quilt shop when her first line came out. Now, and that's when she kind of only matched herself. Mm -hmm. So I literally, you know, she was by herself in my colors mm -hmm. and everything that I did because it was a fig tree quilt always. Yep. Now her range and everybody else's ranges match, you know, mm -hmm. and can blend. Mm -hmm. They don't match necessarily. They blend enough so that I can mix everybody mm -hmm. up. So my, like my red range is truly the fig tree red range. Mm hmm but I can mix in some of the Camille darker reds mm -hmm. and even some blues from French general can match blues from Minnick and Simpson. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's just really about what I'm making and what's gonna, mm -hmm. I don't have a favorite cause I, I really just love fabric. I mean, if I could, if I could just live in a warehouse full of bolts, I'd be happy. That's so funny. With a big cutting table. <laughs> um, okay, so a lot of people are asking about the Crete Wound Bobbin. So what I'm going to do is after the live stream, I'm going to I'm going to talk to Susan, figure out what it is, and stock it at Fat Quarter Shop because I don't even know what they are, and I want to try them for myself. Okay. Um, they come in a box of, um, I think, four million for twenty nine dollars. I mean, there's a ton in the box. Yeah, so they we'll, last over a year. So we'll figure that out after. Um, do you have any bucket list quilts from other designers that you want to make someday? Not, you know, I try to stay away. I love what other people do, but I don't look too hard because I, I would have a tendency to come up with the same kind of block and go, where have I seen that before? And it's happened before that I, and I've had to scratch an idea because of that. Uh -huh. So I don't have bucket list designers. I have bucket list blocks, uh -huh. but not designer quilts, you know? I would love to make, you know, itty bitty, teeny tiny two inch blocks and do something fun, you know, something crazy, mm -hmm. do something totally out of my, my personality range. But I don't see that happening anytime soon because I'm not motivated enough. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have some people asking about binding. Do you machine bind? Do you hand bind? I hand bind and I call it binding prison. I hate binding. You I hate despise it? binding. I hate binding. I hate binding. Oh my gosh. I love it. I don't ever do it because I don't have, like, I have people that I pay now because I don't have time and I couldn't get everything done for the live stream, but I love it. I, oh, I hate binding. I feel like I could just cut blocks all day and then just bind quilts all day. And then not even I can I can cut blocks and make blocks. Binding, no. No. I have so many quilts that need binding right now. And it's like, I don't, I don't love these quilts enough to bind them. I mean, and I feel sorry for the quilts because I worked hard on them. Mm -hmm. If they had feelings, they would be very hurt. <laughs> How did you meet Lisa Alexander? Oh my gosh, Lisa. Okay, so when I worked at the quilt shop, everybody knew Lisa's name, mm -hmm. you know, it's Lisa Alexander from Moda. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, it, you said it like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I mean, that was her title. So when I, when I left the quilt store and then went on social media, I got this contact, contact me. It was from Lisa Alexander on my uh, Pinterest and then on my Instagram. Okay. And I had just literally started Instagram. And I finally emailed her and I said, I think you've been hacked. And she goes, no, I wasn't <laughs> hacked. I really wanted you to contact me. <laughs> That's funny. So from there, it just started. I mean, we have so many people in common and she, oh, she's incredible. I mean, talk about personalities that roll with ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, they roll so fast. I, 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 you could even be a stenographer and keep up with them. Mm -hmm. They're crazy. She's quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love Lisa. Um, let's talk a little bit about the quilt along. Um, so I wanted to talk about the quilt along. Let's see. We published a blog post this week so you can go to the blog to see all the details on it but what I thought we could talk about with you is talk about um because all the details are on the blog of how we're going to do it and all of that like right, two right, blocks right. a week I I would really like to for you to talk about the colors to give people advice on picking these colors but also what other color options uh, would you do besides this? Okay, so I'm playing along only because I loved making that quilt. Yeah. And you use, you can use triangle on a roll, triangle paper, and it, it just makes it, oh, look at that pretty yellow So in this there. is oh, like. I love the yellow. Oh, no, this is my storyboard. Oh. That's my, but it's, yeah. Okay. 
But no, these are my fabrics. Okay. So I'm kind of copying you. Mine are a little bit darker, but. Okay, so I used a lot of those Minikin Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used a lot of those. Because, mm -hmm. you know, that that's a perfect range. You probably could find some Camille's at work, too. Mm -hmm. There may be some Camille's in there. And then you recommended because... this one. So I was going to kind of show these. Oh. So you could talk about this one. Those are so many cute colors in there. I'm actually, because I'm remaking mine, and I'm going to do mine in Christmas colors this time. Okay. Christmas would be fun. And I actually thought you could. Now, this is this is throwing it out there for people that don't want a totally 1,000% scrappy quilt. You could do each four section of baskets all the same fabric. Like each, which one? The bottom part or the top? Or all the of bottom. It? The, well, even the top, even the top. Just all one. Um, all one. You could do, um, like, let's say you did Halloween. Halloween would be really cute mm -hmm. in this. Do you know why? Because you could use one black for all the baskets and all shades of oranges for all of the triangles. That would be a fun one, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see how many people step outside the box and you can see how I really didn't step out of the box because I just copied you. Um, but I wanted mine to match yours somewhat so that uh, people could see. I pulled all this from my scrap or Fat Quarter Shop or I shopped some on Etsy. I do think some of these pinks would work because I'm short a pink. So I think some of those would work. This is, I think, what is this? Liberty by... Uh, Liberty. La this is yeah. Liberty by... Brenda, Brenda, Riddle. Brenda Riddle, and so, oh, Sweet Liberty. And so we pulled this because this is similar to the bundle that you had put together, but we sold out of. We had a, yeah. I know. Yeah. Could you say that again, sold out of? <laughs> oh, here's my bundle. When it yeah. came, I was like, oh my God, it's so cute. So those are the, the you were lucky enough to get it. Yay, you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Sorry, we didn't order enough. Brenda's those two um, reds that you have, those would be cute in there. These? You could throw those in there. Yeah, yeah. and then one the thing dark. that I was going to talk about that's just different is I really have a hard time with backgrounds. I do not do good with backgrounds. I just do good with, like, this background. I don't know what it is, but putting in Scrappy, it throws me off, and I stop. I'll just stop because I get frustrated, and I'll think, oh, it doesn't stand out enough. So that's one thing different that I'm doing is I'm just using more of, like, a just a plain and I just okay. have, like, the dream of one day being able to do this. I just feel like my OCD kind of, I just can't do it. I don't know what it is. Okay, okay. You, you know what? I totally get that. But you need to maybe start playing with backgrounds that don't really read, like, the stories don't say anything in the backgrounds. You know, mm -hmm. like, the, um, like it's just a light gray or a light mm -hmm. tan dot or X or something mm -hmm. like that. Then it doesn't read anything, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so, I think you might have better luck that way to start out scrappy backgrounds because I still I still struggle with that. I because I, when you're doing something that you want to be scrappy looking, you don't want your background to tell you know to be talking too loud. You want your fabrics like in this case, I wanted the blocks to just be the colors we're doing the talking, mm -hmm. not necessarily the prints. Mm -hmm. and but the, I I hope to see a lot of people go out of the box for this. Okay, that, so that stripe is really super old. Super, super old. You know, like, mm -hmm. and this is where I feel sorry for anybody when I do like a publication kind of stuff because I try not to, I always try to shop what I have mm -hmm. first. I mean, that doesn't stop me. I don't ever put myself on fabric restriction. That's just a dumb rule. Um, I go ahead and um, use what I have first and then hope I have enough. Mm -hmm. And if I have an overabundance, yeah, like that would work mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah, and I still keep changing my mind on this one on what I'm going to put in my cornerstones. But I think really... I just love the bias little gingham because it it just it just does all the work. Mm -hmm. I think it's an old You don't have to worry tree. about, did I cut a flower off or anything like that? It just does it. Mm -hmm. I think it's an old fig tree. Um, one thing I was going to say was when you're starting, sometimes when I'm starting, I'll get frustrated if I don't have like it all picked. And so what I learned is start, like I just started with the block, figure out your blocks and then just start. And then you can figure out the rest later. You don't have to figure out the binding, the border, the sashing, the cornerstones. 
everything all at once, just kind of if you're getting overwhelmed with picking scrappy. But another thing is you could just use a fat quarter bundle that you have in your stash. It doesn't have to be red, white, and blue. You could use a bundle you and make already it super have. scrappy. Yeah. No, well, you can make all the four blocks super scrappy, but I will say this, that, okay, see so the middle one that, that your bolt is sitting on, that's a Minnick Simpson blue, but right below that, the, the blue, that's a fig tree blue. See this how one. well those blend? Mm -hmm. And they're not near the same, the same range. Mm -hmm. So that's how, go play in your stash, okay? So those, that's a Minnick and Simpson. I'm trying to see who like else this is, is blue is, I this have This is Minnick, this is fig tree, this is yeah. Minnick, this is... And, but see, they all blend. Mm -hmm. Yes. So everything's playing with everybody. You don't don't restrict yourself to one designer. Mm -hmm. Let it, lay them all out. Mm -hmm. But if you're new and you're too scared to do this, you could just start with one collection and just do one block, and then you kind of have to take baby steps to get to this. I feel right. like it took me years. But also realize if you're new and you live near a quilt shop. Mm -hmm. Those girls live for that. Mm -hmm. They love helping. Yeah. The, that's their favorite thing to do when you go into a quilt shop is to help people pick out fabrics. And they will refine, you know, like people used to come and say, my favorite color is green. I want to do a green mm -hmm. quilt. Well, you go pick out the green that's your favorite color because your green and my green are probably not the same. Right. You know, give them a starting ground. Right. They, lo they live for doing that. They absolutely adore playing in fabric all day long and if you go so to, they will be yeah great to help. if you go to the store i would say pick out like two bolts you love and say okay help me match this like give them something to start with so they have something to um start with or take something from home i oh, love this i i want this somewhere in there can i use it mm -hmm. connie would, sure you can it's your quilt connie would <laughs> like to know what's the difficulty level of the book I don't know. You tell me, Kimberly, because you when you do these, I always love how you rate them. And um, I think it's I, I th see. I think everything's doable yeah. if you take your time, go slow and pay attention. I think it's beginner to intermediate because and I I mean, our instructions are so amazing. I mean, I don't they I'm are. not like a braggadocious person, but Sarah's amazing. Oh, you should be a braggadocious. Nobody person because could top. <laughs> our patterns the way we write them and uh i know we give tips on triangle paper but also kind of that same thing you were talking about earlier make one block maybe you like it yeah. where you make your half square triangles bigger and trimmed down maybe you like them with paper you know maybe you make this a square and these two half square triangles i mean i do weird stuff when i sew um like you can you know change it make it work the way that you like it don't be exactly. afraid to just do your own thing. Um, do you sew with a regular quarter inch or scant quarter inch? A regular quarter. Well, actually, I kind of, <laughs> I have that, the magnet, it actually came in a sew sampler box, that magnetic thing that tells oh, yes. you where your exact quarter yes. inch is. Um, and I realized that I sew an exact quarter inch by total accident. I thought I was sewing a scant. Okay and going, whoa, I am really good at this, and realized, nope, I sew an exact quarter inch, because now that that thing is on there, that's the line I've always thought was my scant. Uh, yeah, go to the, all the questions. Um, if you have Civil War fabrics, how would you incorporate that into something like this? Oh, Civil War would be gorgeous. I'd use all your darker Civil Wars as your, your baskets and all your golds your light greens, your greens. Um, I'd use all those as the the inside of the baskets. Um, I'd use your browns, your navies, your blacks as all the baskets. That would be gorgeous in Civil War. And you have so many background choices, you know. I mean, those that, that taupey kind of tans, the blacks and blues and greens will pop on that for your baskets. Um, what local quilt shops are in your area? Like, do you have any if people are on vacation? At oh, Florida? yeah, we have a lot. But I shop at Cinnamon's primarily. Actually, every time um, I've done a book, I always take them over all of the quilts. And we do, you know, we talk about the quilts. We, You know, I went there one time. She goes, would you come and talk? Um, it was about, it was a bo the book Lisa and I did. And I didn't have the quilts at the time. Lisa was doing a trunk show in Texas and I was doing one here, but I didn't have the quilts for the trunk show. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just go through the book and talk about it. She goes, you can come on over and talk about it. And I walked up, it was early in the morning. I had Sue with me, my long arm quilter. And we said, well, nobody's here. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we thought, okay, th this is an hour before the stores open. We thought, okay, well, we'll go in and we'll talk to one person in the back and then we'll just shop. No big deal. Right. We go in the back. Everybody had parked in the back and the whole room was filled. It was like, ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so we've talked, we keep getting the same questions about the blues, but the blues are a mix of designers, Minnick and Simpson and yes. uh, Fig Tree. Yes. And then some yes. people are asking, would you consider, like, if they wanted to use navy, how do you think it would look? Navy would be gorgeous. You know, medium blue, the only reason, medium blue is my navy. And the main reason is it matches my house. If navy blue matches your house, use navy. I couldn't make a complete quilt with all the navies that I have because none of them blend well enough together. I'd have to start from scratch and get my blues that way. But navy blue, no. Navy blue is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, somebody just mentioned it in the chat, but we have this bundle that's an older bundle. It's by Lori Holt. It's called... Um, be patriotic and so a lot of you might have leftovers Perfect. of this and this would also work i think because uh, even... the aquas aqua would be gorgeous mm -hmm. with the reds and the pinks too mm -hmm. take out the blue the navy oh my gosh it'd be, you could leave the navy in there but the aquas would be beautiful as baskets mm -hmm. and so we were just trying to think of things to offer customers since your bundle sold out and then these are some uh b plaid backgrounds so they're a little bit um you know, these are a little busy, but just to come up with different ideas, because some of our... Well, doesn't she have the B basics? Yes, the B um, basics, B yeah. backgrounds, B cross yeah. stitch. Um, oh, this is a great idea. Judy says the baskets would look great in 30s fabrics, too. Oh, it'd be precious. But this, you know, if you kept your scraps from when we did a quilt along before, you have at least somewhere to start. And the Aura fill that she, that uh, Susan uses is 2021-2024, and I use color 2000. Um, I think we should propose to get one of those. I think you have that great idea, the, um, the uh, mat, doing the mat, uh, like doing a 37-inch mat. Like, that's genius. I know. Yeah. We, Wait, well, you, how many times have you needed that extra little half Every inch? day. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're welcome, Kimberly. Well, I'm here to please. I think I'm going to have to email. I'm going to be Clover should hire me. Yes. <laughs> yes. What's well, funny because people always will say in chat. Well, not always, but they'll be like, do you get paid to say that? I'm like, no, I wish I did. No, <laughs> no, right? I wish I did. You know, it's like I was watching a Netflix documentary yesterday and he was talking about, you know, he made money from product placement just by wearing people's clothes. And I'm like, can I get that deal? Can Talbots call me? Can can the people I buy my jewelry from, can they call me? Like, can somebody pay me for something? Because nobody does. Yeah, right? But yeah, I wish. It's funny, but yeah. Yeah, you need to work on that mat thing. I do. That's Because I had to work on the getting the new one and a half inch square. I like had to beg the owner of Checker. I was like, please. He's like, I just don't think it's a good idea. And I'm like, no, I promise you. I'll make it successful. Please, please, please. Um, well, it's kind of like the cross stitch fabric that you've got the blue and white check. Mm -hmm. That was genius for you to do that. Yeah, thanks. Genius. Yeah, I'm trying to do pink now. We're going to work on pink on Monday because I'm like, you know what? I think I need pink sooner than later. I do like spring green. I think spring green and tan are needed too. Okay, well then we'll, okay. Not Easter egg green, like spring green. You know that pretty green, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the two colors that are needed. Tan is a, an awesome one to have. Because mm -hmm. I use the gray all the time, but tan would look great. I know. And I still wish, like on this, I still wish that this fabric, I know it's discontinued. Or actually, it's not just, this is not the one that's discontinued. No, that's because that's a... Yeah, this is yeah. this is uh, still available, but I wish I could get this on Ada so bad. And they only make it in that one you size. You know, that, that looks painted on, doesn't it? It does. It looks like it. So, I mean... Yeah. I could be a factory worker. Yeah. I'll, I'll paint. Yeah, that's funny. I'll make sure the dots align. Yeah. I'll be the product assembly at the end to make sure all the dots are aligned correct. Yeah. Um, so, like, what do you want to tell our viewers? Like, what kind of tips do you want to give our viewers? Anything you want to end on? Do I want... Uh, do we have to end? I thought we were going to lunch after this. Are we uh, having lunch delivered? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, this has been so much fun. This, I will say this, I'm going to tell everybody, this book is beyond 
my wildest dreams how gorgeous it came out. I know that when I started to talk to Kimberly and Sarah about it, I had no idea. I knew what I wanted it to look like. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that they would fulfill every possible look in that book. When she started to talk about venues and all of that, she was so spot on. Everything about this book I am in love with. I'm totally crazy in love with because it incorporated two things. And I hope this is one that we're not going to see, you know, like at the used bookstore in like a week and a half because it's got cross stitch and quilts. You can't get rid of both. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have a, I mean, I'm just going to give like a little peek. I, I hate to do this because then I'm going to get so many questions that I can't answer. But we are working on something with Susan Aki and Lisa Alexander. I didn't know if you were going to say anything. And so uh, it's in the works. Uh, it's going to be a much bigger, bigger book, but it is going to be amazing. And uh, I'm so excited. It'll be like a 6,000 page catalog. Yeah. I love the sampler. I think the sampler is going to be like something that it's going to appeal to like all ages, all um, styles. So that's going to be awesome. So. This is that that's been fun. That's where I've been in binding prison. I've been watching Netflix all during the day and doing binding prison. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to bind the quilt. That's so funny. Yes, I am. I just actually just literally finished up yesterday. Oh, I, well, then, okay. You have to text me a picture of it because I want to see um, a picture of it. Um, what? No, they're all in boxes now. I already told Sarah they're all in boxes ready to go. Oh. And I'm actually working. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say I'm working on the cross stitch, but there's That's a cross right. stitch. Yeah, it's so cute. Okay. Yeah, you can say whatever. I'm working on the. So I'm going to be in cross stitch heaven while I um, watch Netflix today because I'm almost finished with that so I can get it to the framer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That one, I'll, I definitely can text you a picture of that one when I. Because, you know, we text now that your my phone numbers and your phone, your phone numbers and mine, uh -huh. you know that <laughs> yeah so we're going to give away three uh three of the flag day templates three of the books so susan you get to ask the question of what they have to answer to win win the books and the template so oh no yeah so think of what kind, like what kind of question anything it could be anything sometimes what time i ask them about biscuits like i'll ask anything sometimes i'm serious sometimes i'm silly Okay, okay, okay. Since it is about summer memories, the question is, well, if I give this question, I mean, you're going to get paragraphs full of stuff. You don't want paragraphs. You want short answers, right? No, I'll so, read anything. It gives me, hey, oh, okay. it gives me something to do at basketball when my kid's not playing. Your best <laughs> summer memory. Okay. What is your best summer memory? Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope all of you guys loved it. Now, if you guys have any questions that we missed or you didn't. I'll your, come back. Yeah, she'll come back, but also she can answer <laughs> Next in the week. comments. No. Next week. <laughs> Don't say that because then people will be calling customer service. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not next week. Well, I would, but Kimberly doesn't want me next week. Okay, let's get that up front. <laughs> so you can put it in the comments and we can answer them there too. So. Okay. Okay, so thank you so and much. And you're going to get with me. You wanted to, oh, you wanted to know, you're going to let them know about the pre-wound bobbins. Yes, I am going to, we're going to figure that out right when we. If I didn't leave, if I wasn't leaving a blank screen, I'd run in there and go grab them. But No, we're going to go grab them in a second when we close out. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs>